Welcome to the podcast that questions everything, from conspiracies to philosophy, from science to religion. We will be looking at the construct of the illusion, and as always, we will question everything. Welcome to Everything is an Illusion, podcast with question everything, uh, Rob Wallace your host, so we're going to be doing a fantastic podcast on pyramids, so stay tuned if you're into pyramids, megaliths and the ancient engineering structures etc. I have with me today Colin McGregor who is uh, a guy I met many years ago at university, very bright chap, he's um, a member of the full on mental health group and is, if you want to get Colin stuff, it's, uh, he does uh, screenwriting, um, novel writing, playwriting, and it's uh, it's all about breaking that down and making your scripts uh, a lot better. But Colin could maybe say a wee bit about that as well. And that's it, McGregor Consultancy. You'd just like to say hello, Colin. Hello, folks. Uh, well, as Rob said, I, I run the McGregor Consultancy. It's regarding uh, analyse and edit scripts. Um, make sure the storyline's running properly, it flows, and there's no mistakes. And you, and, and also on the structure, the the industry structure of your your uh, screenplay etc is up to date. And um, also uh, as consulting in theatre work etc on your shows, I come in and uh, sort of a act as a sort of a co-director to make sure uh, your play is up and running and. Uh, the the dialogue fits the characters etc etc so that's a wee bit about me so that's big Colin and it's uh, a bit I say pyramids so um, I, I personally have always had a fascination with pyramids um, I'm fascinated with the majestic building projects of the ancient world and obviously the pyramid is the classical example of uh, the ancient wonders and uh, it's like the, the your first and most people's first uh, viewpoint into the ancient world when they're thinking about megalithic structures ancient engineering again big projects you know how did they do these things the who the where the why the when etc so we're going to have a, a good conversation and look at the who the why the where the when um, from Egypt to China to Mexico Peru India Look at the pyramids of Earth. So the first interesting thing that got me calling about the, into the mm-hmm. pyramids is, you know, there's over a thousand pyramids on Earth, and a lot of them are of different, obviously, age and mm-hmm. of differing engineering uh, constructs. You know, different materials, different techniques, and it's generally to do with the age. The older they are, the better they're built. The more accurate they're built, mm-hmm. um, the larger the stones that they could move. Um, these kind of anomalies kind of jump out when you're looking at the kind of world scale of pyramids. So, just firstly, what, what's your kind of fascination with pyramids, uh, or what, what, what sort of grips you about this kind of crazy? Well, my, my first fascination was obviously on the on, on the, the the most well known. Pyramids, the, the Giza pyramids, the the Great Pyramids. Uh, obviously, they're, they're a fascination in themselves because they're so, they are the, the oldest pyramids. I mean, they roughly speaking about two thousand five hundred sixty years BC. They were made um, phenomenal. Uh, but my interest came regarding the Mayan and the Aztec pyramids, the stepped pyramids with the flat top of how they found similar, exactly similar pyramids in India. Now, I don't know about the ones in China, if they're stepped with the flat top as well. Um, but I got a fascination with that I read a while ago that the Indian pyramids and the Aztec Mayan pyramids were of a similar age, yet and, and they were very, very similar, yet they're worlds apart. That interests me of how they came to build such similar uh, projects. Uh, Now, there's also the fascination of the the ancient pyramids were built for death, as in burying uh, the kings and queens, etc., but also to align to the stars, and we'll talk about that later, I think. But uh, 
the Mayan Aztec and the, the Indian uh, pyramids were also used for death, but in a different way. It was more a uh, uh, the Oh, what would you call it when they, 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 they kill someone? Sacrifice, that's the word I'm looking for. They were more for sacrifice that, rather than a burial. Well, I think that's an interesting thing because uh, burial, a lot of the times, um, is um, uh, in, the, in a, Egypt, it seems to be in the newer pyramids. Mm-hmm. It's not actually in the ultra old school pyramids. Um, so Ken, we're on the same page, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to run down uh, eight pyramids, just a wee uh-huh. bit of facts and info about the various different pyramids to hopefully uh, get a bit of idea and a bit of get some interest. So we'll go with the biggest pyramid in the world by height, which mm-hmm. is the Great Pyramid of Giza, yes. as you say, built 2560 to 254 BC. Mm-hmm. Reckoning at 146 meters, 481 feet. That's when it's got its uh, when it's capped in the limestone. Yes, yes. Uh, and that's in Egypt, the biggest pyramid in the world by volume and by and sheer size is the El Castillo, uh, Chichen Itza, in Mexico, and it's a main pyramid, and it's 800 to 1000 AD, um, and it's again by volume is the biggest. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we've got the uh, the fantastic pyramid in Italy, the pyramid of Setius, uh, built uh, in Rome at 18 BC. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a tomb, and it was 37 meters high, and that is exactly 125 Roman feet, and it's got its full casing, oh. and uh, it's a very steep pyramid. It's mm-hmm. very uh, vertically steep, and it's got its full casing, and looks pretty amazing, and it has the, a lot of the tight. Uh, joints that you come to see with a lot of these hardcore megaliths. Um, Pyramid of the Sun, Mexico, 71 metres high, 233 feet stepped. The Red Pyramid in Egypt, 104 metres, 341 feet, and that's 2613 to 2589 BC. The interesting thing about the Red Pyramid, the Red Pyramid is the same size as the Luxor, a pyramid in Las Vegas. If mm-hmm. anybody's ever seen that classic Las Vegas in a lot of movies, yes, um, can that's the same size, roughly within ten twenty feet of the Red Pyramid. So uh-huh. the Luxor Pyramid, it only took them eighteen months to build. <laughs> it was built in nineteen ninety one, cost three hundred and seventy five million US oh, dollars. Oh. Uh, it's the same size, as a uh, comparable size. Yeah. It's 107 metres, whereas the Red Pyramid's 104 metres tall. So, again. So, I, I'm just wondering now that they've built a new pyramid in India uh, for the sake of meditation. The guy who built it is very much an artistic piece. I don't know what size that is now. And you've got me wondering. I wonder how that compares to. Well, there's, a, there's a big one in, uh, in France as well, another modern one uh, at the, the Louvre. Uh-huh. Um, but I'm just, just going to finish these two last pyramids and get the Chinese pyramid. Uh, there's more pyramids in China than there is in Egypt. Yeah. Uh, so it's quite interesting. But the engineering, and we'll talk about this a bit later, the engineering of the Chinese pyramids is a compressed dirt mixed with grass. Uh, and that's compressed, and that's the fibre in the, in the dirt that ah. holds it together. So it's a totally yeah. different, yeah. it's a rammed dirt, a rammed earth kind of. Um, and the Mehong Mausoleum, or the Moling Mausoleum of Emperor Wu Di, it's a kind of clay uh, and rammed earth white pyramid, is supposedly 50 metres high, um, but volume, um, there's a lot of mystery, there's a lot of lockdown over the Chinese mm-hmm. pyramids. In fact, a lot of the Chinese pyramids are um, farmed over. Again, they plant oh, up the trees mm-hmm. up them and they cover mm-hmm. them in earth because they're earth constructs. And they plant it other because they don't want a. It's a very strange uh, cultural kind now, of thing. Th- these Chinese pyramids, do they have inner workings? As yes. In tombs, yes. etc. Well, yeah. the, 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 if you think about um, uh, the Terracotta Army, mm-hmm. you know, it's associated with a pyramid, you know. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it very much, that's one of the things, very much the Chinese pyramids are. Um, are mausoleums or mm-hmm. mausoleums they are mm-hmm. very much burial for an emperor 
Uh, and it got to the point in China where they, they and it's very, the archaeological kind of evidence is right there in China mm-hmm. that they can they were using can seventy percent of the resource of their kingdom to build their pyramid and uh, using the rammed earth kind of method and it came to the point of one emperor who said no the people don't need to suffer but I still want a huge kind of uh, memorial yes. or a tomb and what he done was he chose a mountain and they buried a hole into a mountain ah, and he right. put his tomb in mm-hmm. the mountain and basically he had the biggest can, and then from then on they put themselves in the middle of mountains mm-hmm. um, which still gave them that status that they craved but it meant he wasn't killing you know a huge percentage of his populations because uh, the Chinese just like the, the, the Egyptian and uh, and various bits in Asia where they have pyramids in South America. Mm-hmm. These are absolutely huge uh, engineering constructions. And mm-hmm. like one of the things for me, I, I love the math. So if we take a uh, Great Pyramid of Giza, 2560 to 200, 2540 BC, that's 20 years. Uh, there is an estimated official 2 million blocks. So breaking that down, that's 100,000 blocks a year. That's 274 blocks a day. That's 11 blocks an hour, mm-hmm. 24-7 for 20 years. 20 years, that's exactly, yes. Uh, 11 blocks an hour mm-hmm. for 20 years, and some of the blocks weigh up to 70 tons. Oh. You know, So we've got to ask some serious questions about, is that time frame correct? Uh-huh. Because if that time frame is correct, they were using the entire can workforce of of can Europe and Africa and can the the and then the other side of that is how can the the planning like the planning to get the kind of precision that is involved the Great Pyramid of Giza is the most precise pyramid mm-hmm. of any pyramid and some of the uh, I've got some uh, stats here on the precision. Um, so they're working at that kind of precision and that kind of efficiency mm-hmm. flat out 24-7 for 20 years yes. and to me that is you know that sort of project even though it took 20 years to execute would probably have took 20 years to plan yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean but now, they I, don't take into account the plan yeah now I heard you were sitting there about the construction of it and how many people it would take I read that it, it took 200,000 people in two shifts, two split into two groups of a hundred thousand people, and there was uh, villages made for them, to- little townships made for them to live, and they were they were fed quite well and given salt, etc., and they were looked after. Uh, I mean, there, there's pictures that come about them getting whipped and everything like this. No, that, I think that was, is, a, is a false theory. I think uh, they were looked after as a workforce. And it split into, as I say, two groups of 100,000. Now, you think to yourself, well, that's a lot of people. So you can understand maybe the dragging of these huge blocks on pieces of wood is possible. But up those steep hills, because apparently they, they built round about the pyramids, uh, piles of earth they put uh, sloped up the outsides of the pyramid to drag these blocks to put them into place. Uh, it must have taken some amount of work, but as you said, I heard as well, it was 20 years it took to build them, and I did like you think, only 20 years, that's amazing. Well, uh, a, couple, a couple of things there, um, that methodology, which is, uh, I think a lot of times we um, when we watch archaeological programmes, mm-hmm. that archaeologists and historians, and they come up with these crazy engineering ideas of how things were built, and they don't consult an engineer. They don't consult somebody who actually makes things, who thinks about forces, thinks about materials, thinks about all they kind of things, you know. And that is probably the craziest thing that we could do in any kind of society. We can, or so the historian says this. Um, so what does the engineer say? Well, the engineer says straight away that the earth ramp theory is hogus bogus bullshit, uh-huh. and the major reason is the earth ramps would be so much bigger. Than the pyramid, yes, you need so much yeah. earth to make these huge ramps. So that mm-hmm. in itself is a huge engineering project, which is going to like make the project so much bigger. Another thing with external 
uh, earth ramps is it makes it really hard to see the actual pyramid. Now, some of the deviations um, in, in the pyramid, you know, are, are so precise, like over 150 feet. They're like So they're looking at it, they're saying for point A to point B, 150 feet, mm -hmm. a point zero two inch deviation, can over 150 feet. That is, by today's standards, accurate, you know. So you can't imagine, measure that kind of accuracy if it's covered in a big dot ramp. Well, I was going to use a more technical term than what you've used, Rob, in the sense that they were out by a boy here. <laughs> I, I, well, well, some of the Basically. some of the um like the the precision side I was looking at there was a there was an engineer um and I'll put up these links as always under the podcast and you can go and check out these various ideas and theories. Some of them are working in granite and diorite, which are kinda really hard to work stones, but um this engineer he went to a great being of a geezer and he was only considered, he was only looking at the engineering principles and ideas and concepts from an accuracy and from the small side, looking at the small mm -hmm. engineering kind of sides where the, the, the accuracy. And six inch pre straight, precision straight edge, accurate to 0 0.002 inch or oh. accurate to 0 0.00508 millimetres. And he say he, this is uh, various chambers, like in the I think it was the king or the queen's chamber, mm -hmm. where they have the big granite cask, the walls, the the cask itself. Um, he, he compared it to surface plates in modern manufacturing. So uh, oh. again, uh, today's kind of places that are making iPhones and all this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. he compared the accuracy that he was finding in this oldest pyramid. And these inner chambers that have these granite and diorite and tombs, supposedly, yes. and again, it's uh, coffins and the walls and where they meet at 90 degrees, etc., were so accurate that they're comparable to today's in his lab and modern manufacturing. We're talking like, I say, a six inch, straight inch, precision straight mm -hmm. edge, puts it flat. And there's no, there's no deviation in it. Oh, amazing! Um, so th there's, they kind of things. Then they make you ask some questions, you know. Of course, especially two thousand five hundred sixty year BC. Christ, we're talking about here. So, like, uh, for instance, one of his theories, uh, this particular guy or a particular engineer's perspective was that the pyramids originally started as stepped pyramids because that would be the kind of logical you build like a rectangular kind of building uh -huh. and then you build a smaller rectangular building and then a smaller one and then it becomes like a stepped pyramid mm -hmm. and they can show that through again some of the very oldest constructs are this kind of stepped kind of system and then making that slightly better they start to case the steps so then it becomes like a truer mm -hmm. pyramidal kind of shape. Uh, one of the things he was saying was if you look at the outside, um, the outside just a shell, and more likely it will have a, all that excess for working all the stone is actually, because you don't find it round the outskirt of the pyramid, mm -hmm. obviously 4,000 years, but it's probably just dumped inside. That's a filler yeah, and it's like a, the Great Wall of China. It had two two walls on either side, and then mm -hmm. it was filled, and then it was capped. Um, and they reckon that's this guy was saying that's one of his theories. It's built. Okay, and they sort of slowly build it up, like an outer wall, mm -hmm. and then they fill it with all the kind of rubble. Oh, right. yeah. uh, the, the Great Pyramid of Giza has the tomb, which is uh, or the tomb or the Queen's Chamber and the King's Chamber which is not directly under the pyramid, near enough every other pyramid in Egypt, the the sarcophagus or the tomb chamber or the energy chamber, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, is actually underneath yes, right, the very yeah. bottom of the pyramid. So it was, mm -hmm. in engineering terms, it was the first time that they... And, and <clears throat> they're having the, the, the three or four or five big granite things above the king's chamber, the queen's chamber, is basically to dissipate the weight. Again, mm -hmm. it's a structural engineering... 
Yeah, there is a lot of people talk about kind of it was a power station. You had that feeling. <laughs> I've heard that. <coughs> um, but it's a um, from an engineering perspective for me, I, I find it absolutely fascinating the accuracies um, because when you talk about accuracy, that means that there were engineers. That means that they were mathematicians. Mm-hmm. That means that they had planned this stuff out. That this was a kind of a, a step by step of progression. They must have started with kind of rectangular and built up to the step, built that up to the kind to the surface, and with every pyramid making it more accurate. Mm-hmm. And then when you see that the accuracies are over the distances and the sizes, you know, and and things like hauling. The, so the, the king and the queen chamber are about 70, 70 feet up and they're granite so they got the huge 70 ton kind of rooms you know big granite plates mm-hmm. and stuff and hauled them up 70 feet and not only that they, they also built in uh, channels to, facing uh, shafts facing the, the Orion's belt for a uh, to, to release the spirit, as they thought, to, to go straight to the Orion's Belt, where their, their sort of a spiritual home was, uh, in the constellation of uh, Orion. And I don't know if this is true, but some people say there's a certain time where the sun shines down those shafts, and they, they were built to such precision that to face Orion. Now, the, the thing I had with that was... There's uh, three Chinese pyramids that are exact same alignment as the three geezer pyramids. Yeah. The exact same, that two and one to the right. Oh, not left, depending on how you look mm-hmm. there, but the exact same light up. Yeah. To the same style. Wonder, I wonder if the Chinese pyramids, the people who built them, I wonder if they sat one day and said to themselves, right, what do we want? Oh, there's these guys in Egypt that way back in the 2000, 2000 plus BC built these pyramids. Mom will build pyramids like that. Or... Had they heard of the Egyptian pyramids at that time? Do you get where I'm coming from? Well, the, 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 I think the reality of the ancient world is ancient world where <coughs> seafaring people, mm-hmm. the Phoenicians, the ancient Egyptians, the the, <coughs> the ancient Egyptians, uh, well noted that some of these blocks they sailed them down the Nile. They made boats, archaeological That's evidence, right, yeah. these huge boats. Uh-huh. Now, in today's world, we do blogs and a kayak is bound for B&Q is manhandling a single solo journal across the Atlantic. Are we saying that ancient people who built a time machine, i.e. something that stood the test of time for 4,000 years, could not sail across the Atlantic? Yeah. You know, I mean, people are doing it in kayaks. Yeah. The other mm-hmm. thing that backs that up is there has been, uh, within uh, Egyptian society, mummies that have been found with nicotine, mummies that have been found with cocaine, uh, and nicotine and cocaine only come from one place, which is mm-hmm. South America. And then in South America, you've obviously got a very a similar pyramidal, um, uh, but also there's other symbols that are quite similar, let's say the snake the ego, um, the the gods, the way that they describe things. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of there's a lot of connection. I, I firmly believe in the ancient world. They traded. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they, they had that information. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. There, there was, a, mm-hmm. you know, if they can build a boat. You know, what I mean, we we went. If if you believe that in evolution, and you believe that it was a migrational process through Africa and Europe, Africa and Asia. Asia, doing into Australia and New Zealand. Well, the fact of the matter is these people must have crossed the sea at some point to get to Australia, to mm-hmm. get to Japan, to get to New Zealand. You know what I mean? If people crossed the sea to migrate when we were hunter-gatherers or gatherer-hunters, we can cross the sea at the height of ancient civilization where mm-hmm. we're building mega-pyramids, we're moving 70-ton blocks... We've got high culture with, with language and music and math and can religion and can chemistry mm-hmm. and can precision engineering that is can comparable to today's manufacturing place. You know, mm-hmm. that hundred percent believe that they travelled and they exchanged information, they exchanged knowledge, 
Uh, why not? Why why would they can not? And that, the thing for me as well is the the three major kind of um, people that had really amazing megalithic stonework also had pictorial languages. Okay, mm-hmm. that, that they don't have a okay, like alphabetical. Okay, mm-hmm. the Mayan, the Egyptians. And the the Chinese Japanese all have uh, pictorial languages. Mm-hmm. Some of the best megaliths in the world are in in Japan, and it's that that early pyramid that you get in Maya uh, Egypt, and the early megaliths in Japan all have that super precise uh, engineering where they have multi side blocks that connect with other multi side blocks, mm-hmm. with other multi side blocks on top. And you can't get a razor blade in between. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. um, so that that kind of stuff, that engineering kind of side of that, that that is. Um, I know we tend to think <clears throat> about the, the pyramids getting put together, the Giza pyramids getting put together, as in, oh, they just cut out stone from a a quarry and then dragged them along and put them. But they, they came hundreds of miles, probably these pieces of stone. And then the work that had to go into that one piece of stone, as you said, to make it precise to fit into a block where you couldn't get a razor blade in between it, is phenomenal work. I think the mass majority of the stone for Syracuse pyramid actually came from on site. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the granite and the diorite, they came from. I think it's like a red granite from Aswan and uh-huh. it was sailed up uh, the river and then what? Now, there's a classic kind of thing people say, granite can be worked or diorite can be worked, it has to be worked with power tools, etc. Uh-huh. But it can be worked with soft metal, uh, with, with the copper tools that they had. But it requires just simply loads of elbow grease, friction, so that they use sand so like blunt wood, blunt metal mm-hmm. with sand and it continually worked in it's going to cut through that over time quite quickly uh, some amount of time no, you can work through it okay, I've watched a couple of good videos and I'll put them up mm-hmm. and the guy shows you working granite like this but it's the precision That that isn't going to give you precision that is equal to today's manufacturing mm-hmm. plates Mm. That's not going to give you the precision of, you know, a six inch precision straight accurate to point zero 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 two inch. You know that that stuff's modern engineering yeah. kind of kind of standards where they're using lasers and all these kind of things to calibrate uh, these precisions. Mm-hmm. But yet they had the precisions, and there's a lot of kind of stuff with kind of looking at uh, machine marks. But the classic thing is, for everybody who finds a machine mark, you can logically can explain how it was done with a simple technique of... Um, I, I went to Saxe Women in, in uh, Peru, near Cusco, and they've got huge 70-ton blocks, and they, they all match together perfectly, mm-hmm. like 14 sides with a 10-sider with a 10-sider on top kind of get a razor blade in between them it's like standing next to a house each block and uh, the local guide was telling me that he was using river stones and they used river stones and they pounded the stone and I was like can that no that mm-hmm. did not happen that did not happen you know what I mean that's the craziest kind of idea to say that can this was done where, because that's the only way you can explain it mm-hmm. and that's there's another explanation I don't know what it is but there's another explanation you know um, it's no so the, the, you were saying there about tombs you know yes, the Egyptians yes. uh, can, a lot of them uh, would perceive it as say, say a king or a, a queen's tomb mm-hmm. um, definitely Chinese pyramids they were mausoleums or tombs mm-hmm. you know, I don't think the South American the, the definitely South American pyramids that have been found uh, a mummies mm-hmm. within, and again, there's a correlation and a connection. This idea of mummification, this idea of preserving the body with possessions, mm-hmm. so that they can uh, move on to a 
an afterlife. Life, yeah. uh, there's also a connection with the stars. Now, I think the, the connection with the stars, don't quote me on this, but I think it could be as simple as there was no light pollution. Mm-hmm. Everybody's seen the stars. And in a day to day living, it would have been like the way that we know uh, soap programs and we know, we know we're wearing the internet. People would have known the stars, they'd have known the constellations. Mm-hmm. You would have used it to navigate, you would have used it to say, you can, to what get time your of year it was. Yeah, time of yeah. the year, the seasons, get yourself from A to B if you're a farmer or if you're a, whatever. You needed to know kind of that information. So I think there was a, a lot more kind of emphasis, mm-hmm. um, and obviously it would, it's a big part of your culture and your society, so you're going to build your great monuments to things which tie up. To today, things it could have been a calendar. It could have been, can yeah. Um, that one of the best theories that I've heard about the Giza pyramid is it was a time machine. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I've heard that the, uh, they did research in Russia and U- Ukraine lately, uh, into pyramid shapes, and they say it has an effect on the human physical and mental uh, health and abilities. It has a huge effect on them in this research they did in the, uh, Russia and the Ukraine. And they believe that back then that, that there was power found within a pyramid. What kind of power, as I say, I, I don't know, as in power station or something like that. I, I don't believe, I think that's a step too far. But as I say, I think it uh, probably has some sort of a composition that does create an energy within a human being. Uh, to, that alters their physical and mental uh, state of mind. So, well, so that's my thought on that. <clears throat> so there's a couple of things on that then. The, the Kemet, which is the original, kind of, well not original, but the, the people of Egypt who, the, uh, there's a, an oral tradition, Kemets, mm. and they put forward, uh, the, again, they're the keepers of the knowledge of Egypt, they're Egyptian, no Islamic, the, this is the... the, the kind of true history and it's an oral tradition and they talk about them being uh, like spiritual vibrational tools it's almost like a tuning fork that mm-hmm. you use for tuning your guitar each of the different vibrations each of the different uh, pyramids um, put out a different kind of vibration that allowed um, can people to be attuned, people to can uh, uh, energetically you know, mm-hmm. for consciousness programming mm-hmm. and enlightenment and kind of meditation and all that kind of stuff but if you think back we never had internet never had uh, tv you know that spiritual kind of part of life there were no unprocessed foods all that kind of stuff and people done a lot of their thinking and planning like a pyramid would have been planned in somebody's head Mm -hmm. i mean the, the, the 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 memory the ability to create 3d models in your mind through can hourly concentration and hours and hours of concentrating and being able to focus and can build things in your mind is real you know some folk do it the day and we give them huge regard in society Darren mm-hmm. Brown you know what I mean that would have been a common kind of skill that people had in the ancient world yeah. because you never had computers to, to mm-hmm. store all your crap and you had to store it and, <clears throat> and then the, so they believe it's like a, a kind of spiritual thing. There's a, the Giza Power Plant as a book, all about the whole idea that, that underneath um, the pyramid, the water flows, um, and that creates a static electrical charge, and that goes up the, the two kind of chambers that lead mm-hmm. up to the king and queen's chamber, and uh, they were filled with particular uh, chemi- chemicals that were the mix of the static and the two chemicals created a power plant, a Giza power plant, and it was transmitted. Um, and the uh, there's one in there's one in uh, Washington. There's one what they call the kind of pillars, like big giant penises. Um, it's an Egyptian obelisk. Obelisk. Obelisk, yeah. uh, obelisk for receivers. And they had a kind of electrical energy system of the ancient world, mm-hmm. and they transmitted and received. And one of the, the 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 best backups for that is the technology is based on a technology that Nikola Tesla 
brought forward and he actually created a, a, an electrical generation and transmission system based on that principle of building it on an aquifer, the, the water mm-hmm. passing through the static can and then transmitting that energy. Um, there's other people that talk about it's a time machine that was built like mathematically um, can the proportions, the size, all that kind of stuff. You can get the weight of the earth, you can get pi, you can get Fabinonchi, mm-hmm. you can get all these different mathematical principles that all come from the Great Pyramid and the idea behind that kind of thing of a time machine that was built in high society to to just the way we send information into to space to particular uh, mm-hmm. to potential alien contact to say we're male and female we know about digital technology we this is our DNA etc etc it was their way of encoding all that information into a uh, into engineering into precise mathematics so that and built it so big and so strong that it would be a time machine that would surpass the perils of time mm-hmm. but still reveal its answers if Ken looked at it from the right angle and 4,000 years later Ken folk are saying Ken it does this and it can do that and you can get the weight of the earth you can get this alignment you can get this mathematical concept I think there's just so many um, and that's why I think it's an illusion as well this mm-hmm. whole idea of pyramids you know, I mean, they well, they, they say there was an ancient. That some people say there was an ancient race of intelligent, an intelligent race, at t- around about ten thousand BC, who were killed off by a tilt in the the Earth axis, and it wiped them out. But a few survived, and some people say that the, the, the remnants of that race are the people who built the pyramids, through, as you said, now possibly their knowledge of creating a power station or a time machine you know they, 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 they were intelligent intelligent people uh, but they were descendants of this ph- phenomenal race of people back in the 10,000 BC now I'm going to just change things quickly because there's something uh, a few questions I need to throw in before our time's up that I'm dying to ask you on your thoughts on it uh, they do say, here's a, a couple of wee theories from me, you give me uh, some of your mad ones. Uh, I heard that um, they moved the stones via sound, sound waves, uh, like uh, dropping the walls of Jericho through the trumpets, the sound of the trumpets, you know, the noise, the vibration of the bass, uh, that they moved some of the rocks into place using vibrations, sound vibrations. What do you think of that? I, I think it's uh, sound. If you look at any of the old school megaliths, um, old school kind of technology, mm-hmm. sound is probably where the ancients definitely had an advantage over the modern man. They never had the kind of technology we have. So, they, but musicians, music. Like the can is a big part of all cultures, but like major religions like the tritone. The tritone was banned, but mm. uh, can the, the 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 Christianity it was banned because the tritone was a can it was a configuration that brought the devil. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's there's a lot of musical theory like Pythagoras, Pythagoras the tritone. It didn't fit in with his model, his math, his way of doing things. So they can. They, they they shut it down and then later on that became banned by Christianity banned by that's only in modern day that we use it in popular songs and I think it's great yeah. but the sound uh, you, you, you've seen the classic plates where they put a it's a plate with sand on it. Oh, and it, it creates a design. And it yeah. creates a design. The so they put, through they it, put yeah. the note of A mm-hmm. through, and That's you get right. a zebra. Mm-hmm. You put the a note of C through it. This is maybe not correct. I'm, I'm saying note of uh-huh. C and getting a honeycomb. I don't know what the notes, but there's a correspondence. What I'm getting at is the note A has a correspondent shape, is a correspondent uh-huh. sound, taste, uh, can all these things and then magic real magic uh-huh. that they, they deal a lot in correspondence 
uh, of can things that correspond. So if I do an, an A and I get a zebra shape, then they two are linked. Mm -hmm. They're intrinsically linked. That's the same vibration. You know, it's the same vibration, but my ear picks it up like this. My tongue tastes it like this. Mm -hmm. My sight sees it like this, but mm -hmm. it's five hertz. Um, and I think in the ancient world, they really understood how vibration connected itself to the mm -hmm. physical world. And when you have that kind of understanding, it was like, um, again, Nikola Tesla, he talked about vibration and understanding frequency and vibration, and it was the key to the universe. Mm -hmm. um, I came, we're seeing today levitation um, through uh, superconductors, etc. You know, so we know that levitation... Um, is is can be done, and the at the quantum physics and all that kind of stuff at the base of everything is we are light, and at the quantum bottom particles, light waves are all the same thing. Mm -hmm. You could argue, maybe some people do that sound is the. You know, it's the first sense you hear when, you, when you're born, it's the last well, one you hear when you die. Do you know that, that, that you're talking about the sand and the vibrations, what you create is a sort of a snowflake effect, a design like a snowflake. And they discovered in Roslyn Chapel, round the posts are these carvings of these snowflake shapes. And someone came up with theory, they, that will play a tune. All right. Do you know what does the tune stand for? We don't know, but it's an actual song written in, in these sort of uh, um, snowflake style vibrational designs. Uh, so that was one little thing I had to. Here's another one for you. Uh, why no word of pyramids in the Bible? If they were created, you know, 2000, 3000 BC, and as I said, the other. Um, in China it was 221 BC, in Mexico 300 BC, uh, okay Greece was the 4th and 5th centuries, that's the only dates I can find, but the, the Bible, if, if it was such a big thing, it's, well it just proves yes, the, the pyramids must have been built uh, through an ancient uh, god worshipping, deity worshipping uh, civilization. Because it certainly wasn't a Jewish thing or a, a Christian thing. The pyramids, definitely not. Uh, and I, I'm just fascinated that there's uh, no word of it in the Bible whatsoever. That's it. It's, uh, something I had, had not contemplated was the kind of inclusion or exclusion of pyramids in the Bible. You would expect them. Um, again, obviously, in your old school uh, movies where you've got Moses and mm -hmm. kind of, they kind of biblical stories that are based within Egypt you always see the pyramids but that's Hollywood <laughs> um, and I'm guessing that's just a kind of magical references mm -hmm. of using what people um, again how do you know it's Egypt well it's a pyramid Aye. they're on a Nile again, <laughs> we, we know it's uh, Egypt and um, the headdress so that's, again why do the why does the major religion one of the major religions of the world not um, address it. So it's a very interesting. Well, I don't think it's mentioned in the Torah or the Quran either. You know, it's, these religions just uh, it's as if that this ancient world, this ancient civilization didn't exist. You know, yet yet they were such a clever, powerful uh, civilization. You think they would get mentioned somehow in the Bible, but maybe they're just. Uh, thrown out because of the fact they weren't of a sort of a Christian style religion they, they worshipped the sun god Ra and etc. Well that's the, the thing about the Egyptian, the Egyptian like, it's quite hard as well to comprehend sometimes but the Egyptian um, if you like uh, no dynasties but the, the story of Egypt goes back and it covers many thousands of years whereas like, you know, just looking back 30 years for me is hard. Mm. Looking back 50 <laughs> years, you know, it's hard. Um, can we talk about again, 1500s? Fucking Egypt and the pyramids, you know, they had a, a dynasty and a civilization that spanned three, four thousand years, you know. 
Can, that 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 goes a lot further back than the pyramids, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. It's, um, it does, yes. And they they talk about these. Uh, so uh-huh. it, it, it's to pay. I, I don't. I, I don't. Something that I need to look in. If MD if MD has the answers to that, and you know why yeah. there isn't any pyramids in the Bible, then uh, can bring it forth. And because I, I I find it fascinating that obviously. I, Shape wide, there's a square, there's a pyramid, there's a circle, mm-hmm. kind of your basic shapes. Um, again, the pyramid, obviously, a, a big circle would be really hard to make, again, old school technology, mm-hmm. and a big square it probably doesn't have the same uh, structure, or a triangle is kind of stronger uh, than a square, and square buildings are kind of easy to make and they're rudimentary because. The, it's where the poor people stay. So mm. like the pyramid is the logical kind of shape to step out and say this is kind of like God's shape or this is the um, kind of royal shape, the elite shape, you know. Well, they're it? talking about elite shape. The, the Illuminati and Freemasonry both use, utilise the, the pyramid shape in their sim, uh, symbolic suggestions. Uh, with the, sometimes with the top cut off with the all seen eye in it, etc. It's in the American dollar. Yep. Uh, so it's it's very much high up in symbolism within, as I said, the Illuminati and Freemasonry. Um, so it's held in high regard. The pyramid is, it certainly is. Well, that, 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 that's one of the things that's so fascinating. Every culture of every major continent has built pyramids. Mm-hmm. Africa, Europe, Asia, America. South America, North America, mm-hmm. and South America. Uh, there's none of that, I don't think, in Australia or New Zealand, but can, n- nonetheless, pyramids in the ancient world are real. They covered the whole globe. Um, and I believe they communicated, and they're still a mystery because, like, for instance, a very classical and real problem in today's Egyptology is. I study 15 years at university, become an Egyptologist, I'm a professor at Egyptology, I've been to Egypt five times, I'm not by the way, I'm just theorising mm-hmm. here, and I go to Egypt, and on this particular occasion, I put forward a paper that says, by the way, the pyramids are 15,000 years old, that predates the Quran, and as soon as I say it predates the Quran, I'm no longer getting back into Egypt to study the things <laughs> which I kind of spent my entire life uh-huh. kind of researching and studying. So it's not in my interest as an academic to go against the grain because I'll no longer be able to study the things in the native land, you know, uh, excavational kind of digs, etc., to because I'll be banned. Mm-hmm. And that's happened to a lot of... Um, and there's people like... Graham Hancock, you know, when he, he's obviously, a, he was a big stoner for years, he's into ayahuasca, taking mind-expanding drugs, and he wrote, like, Fingerprints of the Gods, and he's got a new one, Chariot of the Gods, and he asked a lot of these questions about, and he says it was a cataclysmic event, 12,000 years, and he, he, there's new sites in Turkey, uh, Bageki mm-hmm. Tepo, and there's one in somewhere in Asia that he's looking at that, that help scientifically back up his 12,000 years ago, some sort of catastrophe or, mm-hmm. catastrophe or something like this. But he had a, a, it was a, it was to be a debate with the main Egyptologian guy, kind of wee guy with the bald hair <laughs> that, that's always kind of on the telly and is the representative of, and the guy just didn't want to debate because, you know, to him, these things are facts this was built then, it was built by this and the era of this. And then when people bring new information, can technology, it's amazing can we have hindsight, we look back at history and we've seen that there was kings and queens that shortened their reign or lengthened their reign or can they, 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 can you look back at the Holocaust, you think that was sanctioned by, that was the government, that was a OK. You look back at, um, can many different things in history and things were were done and they were looking back from our but you're saying that's ethically wrong, it's this wrong, it's that wrong. But in that minute the people who ruled mm-hmm. it was right and it was sanctioned, it was mm-hmm. governed. We're gonna look back at this time 
and there's going to be a lot of academia and a lot of science that we're going to say they were fucking close minded fuckers mm. you know what I mean they did not they had built their, their car their house and they weren't willing to ask other questions which maybe meant having to deconstruct their car or deconstruct mm-hmm. their house and build a new one they've again they're long in the tooth and obviously there's a lot of things which are right with these Egypt guys but uh, there's a lot of things that are kind of scary Mm-hmm. Right, my my battery's flashing here, so right. I've got like two minutes. Two so minutes. Two minutes. Uh, so if you want to sum up, um, you well, know. what can I sum up about the, the pyramids? They will fascinate me forever more. Uh, I would love to know exactly what they were all about, rather than sitting here and uh, um, having, uh, listening to theories and suggestion theories, etc. Uh, yeah, before my lifetime's out, I would love to more, you know the, the true meaning of the pyramids. Yes, what about you, Rob? I, I'm with you there, Colin. Um, I, I think they're fascinating. The, everything from the engineering, the religious connotations, the historical connotations, the cultural connotations. There's so many questions, uh, and that's what I'm encouraging in you to do. Is uh, I'll have these links up, the links to engineers, links to some of the thieves that Colin put for the thieves I put for links to the accuracy, links to the... Check it out, ask your own questions and uh, start to maybe look at the world possibly slightly different <laughs> and be inspired by the pyramids. If you've ever been to any pyramids or if you have any great information on the pyramids that we've not covered, please uh, comment, fire us your pictures um, from the pyramids, whatever pyramids have been, etc. Check out our other podcasts, uh, just lastly, thank you very much, Colin McGregor. Check him out at McGregor Consultancy and uh, Full On Mental Health Project. So that's us. Thanks very much, Colin. Oh, much you're appreciated. You're welcome. You're welcome. I enjoyed it. Everything is an illusion. Is brought to you by RobWallaceMedia.com, award-winning media. The Energetic Mind.com, inspirational, motivational, and thought-provoking art. And health made simple. By today, change your life forever. Health made simple. Info. Thank you, and remember, question everything. <laughs>